You people are the best. So let's talk about a really cool movie. King Kong, the myth, the legend. A story created by Marion C. Cooper, a tale developed since 1899, where he read a book and realized how cool gorillas tend to be. So he made a movie, eventually, of RKO. The film begins with an old Arabian proverb. And the prophet said, And lo, the beast looked upon the face of beauty and stayed its hand from killing. And from that day, it was as one dead. I will remember that part from the good book. That's actually because Marion C. Cooper made that up. And we cut to New York Harbor, where crazy film director Carl Denham is shipping out. Say he ain't scared of nothing. If he wants a picture of a lion, he just goes up to him and tells him to look pleasant. Carl Denham is apparently a self-insert of Marion C. Cooper, who actually did do crazy shit like this in some of his films. Like climbing up a tree and harassing tigers just to get a good shot. But they need a pretty lady for their film they're going to make. But most pretty ladies aren't crazy enough to go with him. So he heads into town looking for one. And luckily he finds one shoplifting. They have lunch and this is Anne played by Faye Ray. She does have acting experience. Her old studio closed down because of Great Depression. So we got our starring lady. Let's go. Someone immediately backhands her. This is Jack Driscoll, the director of the film we're going to be making. The backhand was accidental, but he's not really apologetic because he thinks that women on ships is a bad idea and bad luck and all that. So why are we going out again? Oh yeah, right, there's Skull Island that has a giant fence blocking off one peninsula from the rest of the island. So we do some test shooting. I don't got a swell picture of a charging rhino, but the cameraman got scared. <laughs> that darn fool, I was right there with a rifle. They really earns the title the first Scream Queen. One foggy sail, and we get to Skull Island in no time. There's that giant fence, and the natives who built it. They're just kind of doing their thing, so Denim decides to film them. Natives are pissed that they got interrupted during their ceremony. They try bridging the language barrier. The chief says he'll give them six islanders for Anne. So they just politely walk away. That night, Jack talks to Anne about what happened today. I'm scared for you. I'm sort of, well, I'm scared of you too. Ooh, someone's got a crush. Then the Islanders sneak aboard and grab Anne. But luckily she tore off one of their bracelets and the crew finds it. So they load up and head to the island. The Islanders are having a big party and they open the gates and tie her to a thing and then close the gates behind her. And then the chief hits a gong to summon the Kong. And we finally see one of the most legendary creatures ever. Whoa. Kong was brought to life by Willis O'Brien. Mostly via stop motion, basically putting a metal skeleton in a King Kong costume. But they also got a giant bust and a couple of giant limbs. The effects still look great today, but you gotta realize when this came out, this was basically witchcraft. Especially for how seamless it all looks together. Kong grabs Anne and the rest of the group shows up. Some of them stay behind at the gate. And the rest run around the set to a most dangerous game. There's also dinosaurs. These effects are also groundbreaking because they kind of had to invent green screening in the most complicated way possible. Oh, it's coming right for us. They get attacked by a brontosaurus and wait a minute. It hates this guy so much a brontosaurus decides to become a meteor. Originally all this dinosaur stuff in the film wasn't even supposed to be here. They come from an idea Willis had for a film called Creation. It would have been about a cruise liner and a naval ship landing on the land of the lost, a big island full of dinosaurs. The only thing that still exists is a bunch of sketches of the idea and test footage of someone shooting a baby triceratops and getting chased by its mom. And Khan finally shows up. Everyone tries escaping by running along a log, so Khan just shakes them off. With Jack being the only survivor and everyone else falling into the pit. Originally, we were supposed to see more of the crew falling into the pit and then get attacked by monsters. Known as the spider pit scene because the only footage of this scene is a photograph of a giant spider that was published in the 1960s issue of Fangoria. It's one of the most valuable pieces of lost media, especially for a horror film. But you still can technically watch it because Peter Jackson recreated the scene during production of his remake in 2005. 
trying to recreate the 30s film, even using similar effects to it and filming techniques. But you're away, Jack is the only survivor. Kong goes on his way. He sets Anne in a tree during all of this, but she gets spotted by a T-Rex. And Kong has to fight him. T-Rex tries using bite, but his neck's not flexible enough. So Kong hits the T-Rex with a Canadian Destroyer. They accidentally knock over Anne, but she's fine. Then Khan literally rips the T-Rex's mouth open with blood and all, which is insane for a 30s film. He takes Anne back to his pad in Skull Mountain, but then she gets attacked by what it looks like a snake, but if you look close, it's actually a plebeosaur because it does have fins. I heard somewhere that plebeosaurs probably wouldn't have snake-like necks. They probably would just have, like, human stiff necks. I don't know if that's true or not. My time machine's in the shop. Khan plays with Barbie for a while, but then he hears something, and it was Jack accidentally hitting a rock over. Khan can't play with anything, as soon as he sits something down, someone tries stealing it. So Khan fights a pterodactyl as Jack gets enough time to get Anne, and they try vining down. But then they gotta just jump for it, nearly hitting their head on the ledge. They make it back to the group, and even the natives try holding the door back, but Khan breaks through. Good thing they have the giant mechanical bust of Khan so they can have the bite of 87 early. Whose idea was it to make giant King Kong feet to step on people? Haunted P? <coughs> but luckily Dem remembers he brought bombs. So he tosses it at Khan and, well, he got him. But then they realize, wait a minute, Khan's a giant gorilla. They can make so much money off of this. We're millionaires, boys! I'll share it with all of you! Why, in a few months, it'll be up in lights on Broadway! See, he wasn't lying. Everyone stops being poor so they can go. Everyone's all snazzy looking. Play up that angle. Beauty and the Beast. Clearly, Khan is the beauty and Anne's the beast. So he gets on stage and introduces everyone to King Khan. But in the flash photography, gosses him the freak and break out and escape into the city. Causing a lot of mayhem and he eventually gets Anne back. Ah, oh, cool, they invent the Universal Ride. Then Kong climbs the Empire State Building, showing how big he is, but not as big as he will get. And we get one of the most iconic finales of any movie ever, where a bunch of planes try shooting him down. The pilots here are actually the directors. KK smashes one of the planes, but the bullets eventually get to him. He sets Anne down, and eventually he ragdolls down the tower. The main characters find her, and we get one of the most poetic endings ever. The airplanes got him. Oh, no. It wasn't the airplanes. It was beauty killed the beast. Poetic. This film's perfect. Well, yes, there's a lot of characters and a lot of dialogue that's very of the time. But literally everything else about the film is just kind of perfect, even down to the runtime. The Peter Jackson film is way too long, and this film just feels right. It's a simple story of white people going to a mystical land and dealing with dinosaurs. But the film elevates itself with having absolutely incredible effects and Khan himself. Throughout the film, we're able to tell that Khan has a genuine curiosity about Anne. Performed extremely well, especially for basically a toy. Along with an obvious message about the exploitation of nature by humanity and a very tragic ending of them shooting down Khan for just being him. That and it's a cool jungle adventure film and it's fun seeing giant monsters rampage around cities. For how much this and Kane gets brown nosed by a bunch of film snobs for being a groundbreaking work of awesomeness, creating a lot of film techniques that King Kong did a decade earlier, it kind of deserves the title of best movie ever made, even more so than Citizen Kane. 10 out of 10. Remember to like, share, comment, and if you're new here, subscribe.